Good morning and welcome to part two of my double shot of content. I'm about to leave Houston, but I was able to gain a hell of a lot of footage, some of which I'll release on this channel, some of which I'll just be releasing to my Discord supporters who are backing up my return to Boca Chica next month once the launch takes place. If you want any more details about getting involved in that, well, check out my Saturn V video that I just released today, linked at the end of this video. So sitting here right now and I must say getting very excited about the prospect of everything that NASA is up to. I got to see everything about Artemis. I got to see Saturn V in all of its glory again. Never get sick of doing that. And now NASA is just down the road at the Johnson Space Center and I'll tell you I could not be in a better place except maybe for Boca Chica. Super exciting. However, I decided, you know, why not check in to what's up with Blue Origin of all people? Haven't really heard a lot from them ever since New Shepard blew up with a collection of NASA experiments on board, by the way. But one thing is absolutely certain. After that debacle, there's no way NASA would possibly contract Blue Origin for another mission. NASA has selected Blue Origin's new Glenn, the company's heavy lift orbital launch vehicle that has yet to go on its first launch for a science mission. Uh, okay, well, certainly not a critical mission, maybe something in low Earth orbit, some sort of non-vital experiment. I mean, there's no way in hell, given the fact that NASA wouldn't award SpaceX a contract until they demonstrated that Falcon 1 could make it to orbit. That's right, NASA didn't give SpaceX a dime until they proved themselves. So Blue Origin, I mean, come on. They're lucky to be getting this contract at all. There's no way in hell that Blue Origin would get an interplanetary contract. NASA picks Blue Origin's new Glenn to fly a science mission to Mars. NASA, you sons of... And by the way, those two clips were from a channel called Global News Daily. I don't know the guy, but I kind of like his vibe. He's sort of sarcastic, so you might want to check out his channel as he attempts to grow it. But in the meantime, what the hell is going on with this contract? Why is NASA entrusting an interplanetary mission to this brand new and untried rocket when they have yet to send a single mission to Mars using SpaceX? Well, let's have a look at New Glenn's theoretical capabilities for those of you who have kind of lost track of this rocket over the many years that have passed since they released this promotional video. New Glenn, at least in theory, is a heavy launch vehicle designed to compete against Vulcan Centaur and even Starship. The first stage, at the very least, is reusable, although in theory Blue Origin has been working on reusability for the second stage as well, and the first stage is powered by the troubled BE-4 engine, which, again, at least in theory, is now operational, with two engines having been flight certified and delivered to ULA. So these seven BE-4 engines, with no solid rocket boosters by the way, deliver 3.85 million pounds worth of thrust, significantly more than Falcon 9, although less than Falcon Heavy. Nevertheless, this is a rocket that can certainly deliver extremely heavy payloads to low Earth orbit. However, once you start getting up to higher orbits, the capability begins to drop off a little bit. It goes from 45 metric tons to low Earth orbits down to 13 metric tons to geostationary transfer orbit. That's a pretty significant drop-off considering that Vulcan Centaur can only deliver about 25 metric tons to low Earth orbit, but 14 metric tons to GTO. Why is this? Well, because New Glenn suffers from the same problem that Starship does. It's a very big rocket. It has a 7-meter fairing, only 2 meters smaller than Starship 
starship, so even though it is manufactured out of lighter materials, it still has a very heavy second stage, and the two BE-3 engines that power that second stage have a combined thrust of only 240,000 pounds, or about 45,000 pounds more thrust than a Merlin engine. That being the case, the upper stage of New Glenn is being powered by only a little bit more thrust than the upper stage of Falcon Heavy and Falcon 9, which is much smaller and much lighter than the upper stage of New Glenn. Therefore, the capability of delivering much of anything to an interplanetary destination is questionable at best, so you'd be looking at a fairly small satellite going to Mars or elsewhere on this rocket. Nevertheless, given the huge amount of thrust that both of its stages possess, you're still looking at a decent sized spacecraft, perhaps one metric ton or something like that. So is that what we're looking at for this particular NASA mission? The escapade mission? Well, no. Not even close. The NASA Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers, or Escapade Mission, are comprised of two spacecraft, neither of which may weigh more than 90 kilograms apiece. A 180 kilogram payload for a rocket that has almost 4 million pounds worth of thrust and a fairing 7 meters in diameter. Huh? There are three science experiments on board each spacecraft, the first of which is a magnetometer that measures DC magnetic fields, and then an EESA, which is an electrostatic analyzer designed to measure suprathermal ions. Once again, we're studying Mars' magnetic field. Yes, it does actually kind of have one, although not a comprehensive planetary magnetic field, but nevertheless, something worth studying. And then finally, there's a probe designed to measure plasma density, so a very important mission. And incidentally, this is the MAVEN satellite, not the ESCAPADE, although the ESCAPADE satellites look similar and actually will be approaching fairly close to the planetary surface as illustrated here, but that's not the point. The point is an absolutely colossal heavy lift rocket is going to be delivering less than 200 kilograms to Mars. It seems complete overkill and an inappropriate use of this rocket. Now, now perhaps it might be a rideshare of some kind, but I'm trying to imagine what kind of rideshare is going to deliver a primary customer to this orbit that's going to be necessary in order for these spacecraft to travel all the way to Mars. A low Earth orbit or sun synchronous orbit trajectory is not going to allow the escapade satellites and their rather feeble ion engines to propel these spacecraft all the way to Mars. This is a mission better suited to a small sat launch provider. Maybe not Rocket Lab because they're a little heavy for that, but perhaps Relativity Space or even Firefly. The Firefly Alpha has been a troubled rocket thus far, but at least it's been able to deliver a payload to space. Granted, that payload didn't stay in space very long because the orbit wasn't high enough, but nevertheless, they've been to space and Blue Origin has has not, at least not barely past the Kármán line, they've certainly achieved a lot more than that. The Firefly, at least in theory, the Firefly Alpha that is, can deliver up to 450 kilograms to a high sun synchronous orbit. And you wouldn't have to go a lot further than that in order to deliver the Escapade spacecraft into an appropriate transfer orbit to get to Mars on their own. Granted, it might not be a perfect solution and might take the these spacecraft a little while to get to Mars using this type of configuration, but still probably a lot more feasible than trying to include them on some sort of undeclared rideshare mission that would be delivering an unknown amount of payload into an orbit that very few companies would really want to go to. In my opinion, Firefly or Relativity Space are much better choices 
for this kind of mission, and it's a lot less expensive. Plus, on top of that, both Firefly and very soon Relativity Space are actually going to carry out missions to space. Whereas the maiden flight of New Glenn most probably is not going to take place until 2024, and that's being optimistic. And keep in mind, interplanetary missions to Mars have limited launch windows that only come up once every two years, which means if New Glenn is not ready, the Escapade spacecraft are either going to have to wait until 2026, or they're going to have to make a last second change of launch providers, which can be very problematic indeed. So why the hell is NASA doing this? Well, for the very same reasons that they've been giving Blue Origin contracts all along. This is such a litigious company, and Jeff Bezos has such a massive ego that it's simpler to just throw him little bones like this to keep him satisfied as opposed to fighting him in court, which is an absolutely unacceptable state of affairs. And not only that, it's working to the disadvantage of small sat launch providers like Relativity Space and Firefly who could really use a contract like this while they continue to develop their capabilities. But instead, Blue Origin, which has billions of dollars to call on anytime they want it, gets a contract like this, which really, as far as the money they're getting paid for it, is completely meaningless. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. Again, please share this video with friends and family and encourage them to subscribe to my channel as well as I drive ever closer to that magical 100,000 subscribers. Have less than 5,000 to go now, guys. And of course, you know that I've got a very, very exciting challenge coming up with a lot at stake that can't happen until I hit that magical 100K. And as always, folks, stay angry about space.